What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Chanel, from Complex Simplicity. Happy Thursday. I don't know about y'all, but for everyone who lives on the East Coast, in New York City, Jersey, Bronx, Long Island, Brooklyn area, we got hit with a blizzard today. <laughs> and so, if I'm being completely honest, I enjoyed a very laid back, lazy day, as I like to call them, in the bed, eating my snacks against my husband's wishes. He hates when I do that because I leave crumbs in the bed. <laughs> um, and watching my shows, taking naps on and off, like to me, the most ideal way to spend a Thursday in my book. And I was like, but we got to make sure we do some vlogging. It's been a few days. The last time I was on here gracing you with my uh, presence, <laughs> it was New Year's Eve. Um, and so a couple of days into 2018, what are we? Today's the fourth day in. Um, you know, I had to come back on and see how y'all are doing out here. I hope that things are going well so far for the new year for you. Um, I know those of us who live on the East Coast, it'll be probably some crazy weather that we all have to gear up for from now. Actually, the crazy weather started from December, but um, definitely from now up until potentially April, it could go either way in the New York City area, um, in the tri-state area for that. So, you know, it's gearing up for the winter, right? As well as, you know, trying to push through with all these goals and different things we all wanna do out here. I've been on a serious music tip, um, I, on my social media for the website, at Complexed Simplicity 09 um, and my Facebook page, Complexed Simplicity. I always have to emphasize the D so you know it's E-D at the end of that. Um, I've been, you know, putting up inspirational thoughts and quotes as usual, but also getting my music lover thing on, hence the shirt, Music Lover which has been on sale for months now. I don't know what y'all waiting for. I know there are a lot of fellow music lovers out there. The shirt is $26.99. You can't beat that. It's different, various styles of the music lover shirt that you can get. Um, this is actually my first time wearing this style of it. I more so wear the nice, sexy, off-the-shoulder Bella um, style during like the spring and summer months, but I'm like bumping. I'm in the house. It is what it is. It feels like summer in here and I'm gonna, you know, start being on camera with my merchandise now. <laughs> and um, which definitely inspires me to want to make more. I've kind of been working on other projects as I've said before, and I'm gonna just keep it real with y'all. I'm working on an EP um, that I am definitely pushing for it to come out between January and February. Um, and so I've been working hard, gunning hard. Today would have normally been a recording day for me in between my regular job, my regular 11 to seven job. Um, you know, there are times where I was going on my lunch break to my brother's house and recording real quick with him and then going back into the field because, you know, I'm in a social work um, field of practice. And, you know, or on my days off or day off during the week, I'd be meeting up with my brother. Unfortunately, the weather was crazy today, so that wasn't able to happen. But I'm looking for Monday on my next day off to get it in. Um, record two songs if we have to. We're almost done with the project. I am so excited about it. I feel so proud about it. It is so me. It's so Chanel. It's so my zhuzh. Um, and I'm hoping that it's different. I'm hoping that you think it's dope. So continue to, you know, head to complexsimplicity.com to get updates on when it's gonna drop, the release date, um, as well as my social media at complexedsimplicity09 for Instagram and complexedsimplicity for Facebook. Check in, because you just never know when that joint may drop. <laughs> so I let the cat out the bag, you know, maybe before the end of this vlog. Um, or maybe on my social media, I'll give a little tickler. You know, I can't give you the full throttle as I'm still working to copyright things um, and get everything in order and together in a professional way that it needs to be. But I know it's getting to the point now where I gotta start, I gotta start teasing you. I gotta start getting you to feel me on this one and 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 want and be like, yo, when is this gonna drop? I wanna hear this EP, right? Um, and of course it embodies all things complex simplicity, all the topics and subject matters that I'm always talking about. What supports my movement is what a lot of the subject matter in the music is. It's very relatable, encouraging, empowering, hopefully. Um, and I, I, I'm hoping that you think it's dope. I know I do. But anyway, enough about that. I'm really on to do 
my review of Tiffany Haddish's book, The Last Black Unicorn. I finished it last week, but between the holidays and just a lot of stuff going on, I wasn't able to come on and do the review just yet. I'm like, before I review this book, I need to do my Happy New Year spiel. And so now that Christmas, New Year's, all that is out the way, Without further ado, I bring to you <laughs> my review. You see, you can tell I've been writing music and everything rhymes lately with me um, of Tiffany Haddish's book. And I have to say this, y'all. Out of 10 stars, I have to come up with my own thing. Um, not stars, um, but we'll figure it out. But anyway, for now, out of 10 stars, I definitely give her book like a 9.5 if I'm being honest with y'all. Tiffany Haddish's story is so real. It's so like raw. It's so like, damn girl, that's what life was for you. But then it's inspiring in the same vein when you see all the steps that she's made to get to where she is and where she's trying to go. It's like, you know, um, interesting as far as how her personality could be what it is. I know she, along with a lot of other comics, they often say they're like tortured souls. They have a lot of issues. And like Kevin Hart kind of said, they, they kind of tend to laugh through their pain. That's their coping mechanism for the difficulties and challenges that they face in their lives. Um, a lot of them have gone through some serious stuff, whether it's abuse, neglect and abuse, dysfunction, uh, someone in the family using drugs, alcoholism. It's always like hardcore issues a lot of comedians have gone through, which is why they have this ability to like be so funny and humorous and to to captivate their audiences, right? And so Tiffany Haddish definitely had me captivated from the first onset of her speaking because I listen to audiobooks. I don't um, really read the books anymore. I find it more interesting to listen to the audiobook and I listen to the books as I'm driving. And that's why sometimes it could take me a week or two weeks to get through an audio book because I only listen to it when I'm commuting, I'm in my car going from point A to wherever, right? And so the biggest misconception out there about audio books is that it's a regular generic voice reading the book. No, 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 no. For a lot of these books that the celebrities are doing um, or people in the public eye are doing, they are narrating and telling their own story. It is their voice. So you can imagine the level of laughter, gut-wrenching laughter I would experience while driving, listening to Tiffany Haddish's book because it's her words, her voice, her inflections, her flair, it's all things Tiffany Haddish, right? And so she discusses everything from, well, the beauty of it is, I let me back it up, I'll say that I, when I heard about this book and I started seeing advertisements for it everywhere, I was always like, what does she mean about the last black unicorn? Like, what is this title about? This is very interesting, it's bizarre. Like, what does this mean? What I love that she did is, as soon as you first start reading or listening to the book, she addresses why she entitled the book The Last Black Unicorn. Now, if you haven't read or listened to this book, I'm going to give you a spoiler alert right now. You may want to no longer watch this video clip because I'm going to kind of get into a lot of what she talks about in the book. And I don't want to spoil it for anyone who wants to listen or read the book and hasn't had the opportunity yet. So please, now is the time to exit on out. Let me say you say exit. No, on out. Hey, hey. <laughs> All right. So by now, hopefully you were able to do that if that's what you felt moved to do. Um, so she, she starts the book off with pretty much explaining why she refers to herself as the last black unicorn. Um, apparently she had what she thought was like a mole. You know how some people's moles can grow very big. Um, so she had it like, I guess, in the middle of her forehead and she would get made fun of by her classmates. I think this happened probably during um, elementary, junior high school, um, that era of her life. And so she would often get made fun of by her peers, her classmates, and she would literally try to cut the bad boy off while in class. Um, she said blood would be streaming down her face and she would then garner and get the sympathy of her friends, her classmates, the people making fun of her. And um, she started to learn early on in her life that, you know, she has a knack for being able to get people's sympathy and how that can actually help her, right? And so um, 
The teacher, of course, would have to send her to the nurse's station. It got to the point, she was living with her grandmother at this time. It got to the point where she, um, her grandmother took her into the doctor because the grandmother is like, that is not a mole. That is like a wart, like a herpes on your head kind of thing. Mind you, she's a little kid, not even having sex yet, nothing <laughs> of those sorts, right? And so, you know, her grandmother takes her to the doctor and then they find out that in fact, it was a wart and they were able, not a herpes kind of wart, but just, you know, a wart. And I think they either had it lasered off, they were able to do some kind of removal of it and she was cured of that issue forevermore, right? But that is where the whole unicorn thing came from. As we know, unicorns have this, you know, um, they're depicted to be these horses that have this horn in the middle of their head. And so from there, she starts to talk about some um, of her issues and struggles she faced academically in school. She really didn't know how to write. She was, um, she said she was illiterate, didn't really know how to read. Um, and she was still able to kind of fake her way through it by using her personality. It seems that Tiffany always had this funny, people-loving, um, infectious personality, right? Very um, extroverted, so to speak. And so she would be able to, you know, talk to that dude that had, she'd be like, oh, I just love the way your voice sounds. Can you read me this passage for the homework? I just love to hear your voice and like kind of flirt. But that was her technique. That was her method of being able to be on top of her, her work. So if she had a homework assignment that required her having to read a passage, she'll just get that dude, she'll smooth him over, flirt with him a little bit, get him to be able to read it to her because she said she had an impeccable memory. And so she would remember everything about the story and that would, you know, prepare her for whatever homework assignment or exam that was to come and so she was able to get through this and skate through school with this um I guess method of hers up until high school um and she was always like in AP classes and so that there's something to be said about that you can't really read or write but you're still able to pass your classes with flying colors she found um creative ways to get around it and one point that she made is that she learned early on in her life there are always ways around rules which could be a good thing at times and can be a bad thing at times and so um you know in high school you know of course it was this guy that she liked and he was in the drama club so she joins the drama club to be able to get his attention and hopefully have something jump off with them and the drama teacher was then able to really peep game <laughs> that this girl don't really know how to read and um kind of challenged her about it lovingly and then took the time out of even her own schedule in between classes to like teach her how to read and so you know tiffany was in drama and that kind of you know from there helps to take off with i guess where she felt she naturally was gifted in. Um, she also went to a comedy click camp. I don't really remember the name of it, but I know that Richard Pryor was a part of this and she actually as a child had the golden opportunity to, to meet Richard Pryor and not only meet him, but to get his critique on um, how to really be a good comedian and to command the audience and to make people laugh, right? So she tells all these stories from being in, in junior high school, high school, um, of course, there's a big part of her life that she's been very vocal about in a numerous amount of interviews, which is the fact that she was in foster care. You know, she grew up with her mom. She's the oldest of, I don't know if it's like five of them, but quite a few siblings. And um, her mother, you know, was a working woman, owned some real estate, and had this boyfriend, a stepfather she didn't really particularly care for, but they had gone out to eat one day, and she was like, Ma, you don't have to worry about, you know, having us go to Grandma's house. I can watch them. I know how to make rice. I know how to do this. She's like eight, nine years old at this point. You know, and we're gonna go to bed in two hours anyway, so I'll be able to, like, take care of them. So the mother is like, okay, and then goes out with her, her man, and doesn't come back, right? And after a couple of days, Tiffany's calling her grandmother like, have you heard from mommy? Like, where's she at? We ain't seen her since X amount of days. And come to find out, the mother was involved in a very, 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 very bad car accident, which is why she never came home. She was in the hospital. Um, and it got to the point where it affected her brain. There was some level of brain damage, which then caused her mother to have like serious mental health issues. Um, maybe even like schizophrenia, something there, um, something major that affected her where her mother completely changed. Um, she said at that point, 
you know, her mother would like curse her out, always call her ugly. You like your ugly daddy and like all that kind of stuff. Um, would beat her, abuse her, which ultimately at some point led to her being placed in foster care. And, you know, thankfully her grandmother, the grandmother was able to get her and her siblings after maybe two or three years of them being in you know, in the system. Um, so it's like a really, really compelling story. She fleshes all these things out that she's gone through in her life very intricately and deeply. Um, she talks about her relationships. Of course, um, I know some of this material is probably in her stand-up comedy. Um, and I know she talks about the notorious story of um, dating this guy that had a physical disability. He had one arm was kind of uh, disformed or shorter than the other, like kind of a nub. Um, and then his face was a little twisted and contorted. Even though he didn't have mental health issues, there was still some kind of physical disability there. And, you know, she talked about in a very humorous and candid way how, you know, she gave this guy a chance and he was rocked her world, was like the best sex she ever had. Like, I can't spoil it. I can't even deliver it the way Tiffany Haddish does. It's uber funny. I remember my husband and I were going Christmas shopping and, my, and I drove, so of course it was playing in the car. And even he was like dying laughing, all involved and into it. And I told him, I said, you see why I listen to audiobooks? I said, they're actually really dope. So when you're driving from point A to D, wherever C you're going, it's, it's like, wow, I'm at my destination already. There were times where I would just sit in my car in my driveway. Like, okay, you know, you gotta go upstairs. You can't continue to listen because it was just that good, you know? Um, and so even he was like, yo. So every everywhere that we drove, and we drove quite a few places that day, we were listening to the book and he was even getting into it. So even for the fellas out there, I'm not gonna say it's just for women. Men could um, enjoy this book just the same. And you know, so she talks about her relationship, you know, how that was a very odd one that was short lived, but the, ses the sexcapades and craziness that was involved and stories around Roscoe, that's his name. <laughs> um, she talks about her ex-husband. I had no idea that she was in a domestic violence marriage situation for a while. Um, the stories you hear about that is just crazy and insane. Um, I was talking to a coworker yesterday, coworker friend. Um, we were talking about domestic violence and just how so many women, people you would never expect, this is their truth, this is their life that they live. They get in, excuse my French, they ass beat all the time. Um, it's just like crazy. They're being physically abused, emotionally abused. Sometimes they're even being raped. And a lot of times I don't think we fully enter in and recognize how real this stuff is. Domestic violence is real. It brings me to think about the whole Tamar Braxton, Vincent Herbert, the allegations that, you know, Mama Evelyn, her mother put out there and just, I always felt like there was something fishy with their relationship from the first episode of the first season of um, the Brack, the Braxton Family Values. And I remember I used to say it to some of my friends, they were like, nah, nah. And I'm like, no, nah, something ain't right here. She putting on way too much, both of them. And now to even watch this last season of Tamar and Vince and to even see even more, like, yes, there were issues all along. And for her to want to leave, the way she used to talk about her thickums and how much she loved her husband, which I'm sure she, she did and does. But I always got the sense, even when she was on The Real talking about past abusive relationships, I always got the sense that that was what she was still living, even with Vince. Right, but we always gotta put the alleged thing out there, right? Um, I don't need nobody coming for me for money I ain't got. <laughs> but I say that to say it is domestic violence is real. There are people in the limelight going through it every day, getting their behinds kicked. Um, they're everyday people, people we may work with, people we may live next door to. Like that's how real it is. People we go into church with who are going through domestic violence situations, men and women alike. And there's got to be more awareness and more of a platform really addressing this and I was glad and appreciative that Tiffany Haddish discussed this in her book because that's real you know what I'm saying she she married him divorced him because of the abuse married him again was still being abused divorced him again and I'm hearing that he's still trying to come after her I think now more so legally because probably because he was in the book even though she um, refers to him as ex-husband. She doesn't put his identity out there, but he's trying to get a coin off of her hard work. It, it's just crazy, right? Um, and so this book is so good. It talks about, like I said, her time in foster care, the abuse um, she went through with her mom physically and emotionally, 
um, how her grandmother was always there for her, but would still give her tough love when needed. The many jobs that she worked in entertainment, like working bar mitzvahs, you know, um, just it just always seemed like she was, even if she didn't realize it at the time, she was on track with what she was supposed to be doing with her life. She is one of those bright, um, diamonds shine bright like a diamond, that kind of personality um, where it was, it's just undeniable. You, you can't, um, you can't deny her shine and just when she walks into a room you're gonna know she's there that's always that seems to have always been a part of her her um, personality um, for all of her life and so just hearing the, the jobs that she did you know how she finally found her way back to comedy the things that she had to go through as a female comic in the game that many people don't really talk about um, you know, how hard she had to work, she had to hustle, she had to grind, you know, um, and just when opportunities started knocking on her door and coming to her, you know, the different stories she has about that. And I truly think this book was amazing, dope. Um, you got to check it out. I mean, like I said, her story is so compelling. I don't want to give away too much of the book. Um, I'm trying to just like summarize it without giving you details, but it was amazing. Um, and I definitely give it 9.5 um, uh, stars for now because I don't have a, another uh, thing to say or use. <laughs> but um, I definitely would say, please get that Tiffany Haddish, The Last Black Unicorn. So dope. Um, like I said, she, people like her, um, I read Issa Rae's book, um, you know, I did a review on, I think I did a review on Issa Rae's book, I definitely did one on Gabrielle Union's book. I'm continuously, um, going to do reviews, particularly of women of color and their stories and things that they've gone through, what their lives were like, how they were able to start out, um, in the game, get their foot in the, in the door, and then how they were able to get to where they are. Um, you know, that those stories always inspire me, they motivate me, they fuel me to just continue to go harder, go bigger um, with this whole complex simplicity movement of mine. Um, it really, it, you just gotta be passionate about what you're doing, you gotta believe in yourself, and you gotta, you gotta work hard. You can't be afraid to work hard. That's what I'm getting from a lot of these, these dope women's stories, like, you know, um, there are going to be a lot of setbacks. There are going to be a lot of no's. There are going to be a lot of doors pushed in your face. A lot of people are like, you ain't going to make it. That is whack. What is that about? You know, I'm even preparing myself for that with this whole EP thing. And, you know, um, for most, they may be like, oh, EP, a couple songs. But for me, it's like everything. I'm treating it like it's the only shot that I have, right? Um, and so at this stage in my life, at this time of my life, the creative juices have just been flowing. You, a lot of you have seen who, you know, um, do follow me on social media, the many little, little freestyle songs or quick little things, jingles I'll write. Like I've just had this creative juice flowing in me for a while and I never really allowed myself that moment. I think a part of me really was trying to have this moment with the girls or the young ladies, the women I used to sing with. And um, I think I might've said this before, they might not have ever known a certain um, connections I had as far as within my family to really make something happen where a project can really happen, right? Um, I'm working on this with my brother. He's my producer. He's the one that does the beats, does the mixing. Like, I do have access to talent within my family. You know, between him and my mom, they kind of low-key have their own record label, right? Um, independent, of course. And so I didn't always put out there th the certain access I had within my family um, because I wanted, I wanted us to be able to see if we could really do this. Are we hungry enough to do it? But after a few years of waiting, I'm like, Chanel, you got to do you. Like, this is your time to shine. Maybe this is your time to step out and, and, and do your own thing. You know, you are capable, you do have talent, you know, and you have something to say. And so now is the time, seize the moment. As I always, as I always say, sorry go balls to the wall and just do the damn thing. Like, you know, and I know that I'm going to get a lot of scrutiny and 
criticism and, and critique and feedback and, you know, I'm preparing myself for all of that. But at the same time, I'm like, no, this is your time. This is, this is what it is and, and, and work hard for this to be what it is. So prayerfully, hopefully all goes well where I am able to drop this EP between the months of January, which we're in, in February. I'm almost done recording, um, the songs and, um, you know, hopefully all goes well once I, I'm able to release it through all major um, streaming networks, right? So, um, you know, sometimes you can get some technical setbacks and glitches with certain things. I'm hoping everything is cleared, we're good. Um, and I just wanted to finally be able to kind of put that out there so that you can start to anticipate what is to come. Um, and I'm working on another project that I'm not going to discuss just yet. Um, right now we're going to focus on the music, um, and I'm comfortable with talking about that. Um, but like I said, I'm trying to, I'm trying to hit them hard, I'm trying to hit y'all hard this, uh, this year, right? Um, and, um, so me listening to these books from these amazing women, it helps me you know, as far as just inspiring, it, it continues to help to motivate me to keep going and to just be relentless, as I always say, to have that laser vision focus and and work ethic is everything. I know a lot of talented people in the world. My brother and I were just talking about this last week when we were recording. I know a lot of talented people in the world who they don't really get that far and maybe it's because of their work ethic or maybe it's because of their lack of confidence or maybe it's a combination of the two. You know, um, I do believe that I am a very talented person, but I'll be 100% honest. I know I'm not the dopest singer out there. I don't have the most, ta I'm not the most talented singer out there, but with what God has given me and with this work ethic that I have, I know that I can, I can achieve greatness and go far, you know? Um, so it's not just the talent. You also have to have the work ethic that either matches it or even goes beyond it because that's the drive. That's what's going to have you out here trying to go get it. You know what I'm saying? And, and the confidence within yourself as well, you know? Um, and as long as I can sleep at night with the art that I'm creating, I'm good. I already know they're going to be those that are like, that ish is whack. And then they're going to be others that are like, y'all, I didn't even expect her to go like that. Like that ish was, was dope, right? And then you're going to have those who are in between, like I could take it or leave it. But at the end of the day, it's about me having to be comfortable enough. If I could sleep at night and I felt like what I needed to say, I was able to say it. Um, I feel like I was able to be true to my own creative aesthetic, my own artistry. Um, then I'm cool with that. On my Instagram, once again, at complexsimplicity09 for the website, I recently posted a clip of Solange um, singing Cranes in the Sky. And I said, you know, she has always inspired me. I've been, I have Solange's very first album, y'all, where um, she's talking about, there's this guy that I'm feeling. And it had, I think, um, what is Nori. It had Noriega in the video. And, you know, so I was following her from day one when she used to wear the most bizarrest fashion where everybody was like, what the hell has she got on? What is Beyonce sister doing? Like, I, I respected her goal. She had this superstar sister or a rising star of a sister at the time. And she still did her and she did her own thing. If the Destiny's Child and Beyonce were here, Solange was left doing her own thing and I always dig that about her and I feel like all of her um, phases of quirkiness and, and different dressing um, and music that we might not have always gotten sonically led her to the moment of because there was a year where she was killing it with the fashion game where everybody was talking about salon. She had everybody out here wanting to wear the throwback Janet Jackson box braids. Like she had influence as far as her fashion game. And this must have been about what, this could have been like 2011, 12, around the, those years between 2011 and 13, she was killing it. And I think all of that led her up to the moment of the seat at the table where she got her Grammy. Like that was her most critically acclaimed dopest body of work that she put out there and um you know I feel like there are times we have to go through this journey I can empathize I, I, I had moments of being a very quirky dresser I've spoken about this a lot of times on the website you know where people are like what the hell she got on like what <laughs> you know I had to go through my moments even creatively musically fashion sense I've always been an individual and that's one thing that 
resonated within me when it came to Solange. You could tell she was always her own person. And I always had a sense of self and who I was and who I wanted to grow into. And um, I just respect her and I respect her art, you know, and she doesn't have the biggest voice. You know, a lot of times we tend to think it's the big voices that make it out here and you have to, you know, be like the Jennifer Hudson's and the Fantasia's and these people. You don't, you know what I'm saying? I respect the Janae Aikos. I feel like she has a beautiful voice. I probably would be more apt to buy her album than J. Hud. No shade to J. Hud. But I'm just saying, as far as a music lover, <laughs> you know, um, I'm drawn to different forms and types of music. It's not just about, you know, who can sing, sang you into the ground. It takes more than that to be an artist. It takes more than that to deliver dope music. It takes more than that to come up with a crazy album and song, EP, whatever. And, you know, Solange is talented. And the whole world stopped and listened to A Seat at the Table. And I felt like everything in her journey led her up to that moment. And, um, you know, she continues to inspire me as well. You know, sometimes maybe I go with the underdogs when it comes to certain things, especially in music, because I've shared this before. I was a part of a, a, a singing group with, with, with my friends at the time. And, you know, we all were very talented. And I've said this before, some got more shine than others or might have done well on the spot vocally or had more leads or whatever but I always knew I was a creative and I always knew that I had the ability to arrange I had the ability to sing I had the ability to kind of see the bigger picture and the vision um and that's kind of what I added to the group um but at some point it gets to uh, a period in your life where you, it's your time and Maybe I'm creating my own time or maybe it just really is my time. I, I kind of feel like it really is my time in the sense of being able to deliver my art to the world. Not my time to be the star. Not my time, you know, where you're going to see me on TV all over the place like Cardi B. Was killing the game. Kudos to her and Bruno Mars for that remix of Finesse. Um, but I feel like it's my time as far as... it's. I think it, it's, it's now is the time for me to put my art out there. And as my brother says, once it's out there, it's out there. It's almost history in a sense because it'll forever be there, right? And um, so I'm so excited, nervous, um, happy ultimately, um, anxious, ready to like put the EP out there, but I'm still making sure you know, it, I can sleep at night. It, it meets my requirements. My brother says I can be a bit of a perfectionist, <laughs> but I was, I just want to make sure that it meets, um, what my vision was initially and I'm satisfied with it. That's pretty much really all I care about. I want to be able to help you out there, help the people, encourage, empower us, um, have a different kind of message than what we're used to hearing in songs. Um, but still have it be musically dope and like, you know, just do me and be me and, and, and be unique in that, right? We all have something different and unique to offer the world. And so I will continue to keep you updated with that. I didn't mean to hijack this book review regarding my stuff, but I felt like, you know, if we're talking about inspiration and we're talking about how Tiffany Haddish has made it and is doing the damn thing, then I, I had to share how this also furthers to fuel and inspire me to go out here and get it and do the damn thing um, with my own voice in my own way, um, my own zhuzh, right? And so thank you so much. Um, I will appreciate the support in this EP venture. I appreciate the support. Go get y'all this music lover top, y'all. I'm telling y'all. Um, and continue to rock out with your girl by going to complexedsimplicity.com. And until next time.